Hi, my name is Ted Cord. With me, we have Big Bear, Star Lord, and I guess Matt Hughes counts as skeets. We are within <laughs> another. We were within another episode of Total Justice Gaming. Tonight, Oops. we have the UFS version of Chris Pratt, meaning he does not have to be shirtless for this uh, episode. Uh, who is the first uh, time champion of being a professional? UFS player. I think Miles coined that term, right? Well, they actually, actually it was more Miles, Miles and Garrett, Garrett probably, probably were the ones that coined that term predominantly, and Nathan. Uh, they, they were the, the ones, ones throwing, throwing that word out there. But we are off the Rochester 2K, the first big money event for UFS. Jesse attended, as many of you guessed, traveling to a con may, have, may or may not have given Jesse some sort of throat disorder. We are well, a clean PG like rated Vegas. show here, so we won't go with the normal lowbrow jokes. We'll go with the oh. midbrow jokes. Well, well I, I'll, I'll first, first go, go off, off and, and I'll, I'll say, say congratulations, congratulations, Chris. Chris. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you. You, you were, were per, my, my personal, personal one. After, after you, you took, took Kevin out, you beat Kevin, Kevin in the top eight, eight uh, of uh, uh, quarters, I was like, like all right, I think Chris has got this. You, were the you know, I had to play Dimitri, Dimitri though, right, right after that, that. and that's, that's that is no joke. joke. Red Hellman's Dimitri, Dimitri is scary. Is so that that yeah. would have been yeah. nice to have that on camera too. Oh, Red Hellman, Red Hellman and I were the, the, the two Dimitri players, players in the whole tournament, tournament of twenty nine players that arrived for that two K, and Red Hellman. Said yeah, if he had played, if he had seen what, what I was playing, playing he would have probably had said the changes that, my, that he did with my that I did with my deck. Because when I killed three different people with Venom Shot, the one X in my deck though during the tournament, he was so like I went like 15 damage Venom Shot after playing a bunch a bunch of high attacks, and there's like good game. <laughs> but sadly, I did not make top cuts. Um, only so one, one three, three two was going to make it in, and that was uh, Kevin Broberg because he had insane tiebreakers. We had the Goku versus Vegeta match in the first round of Broberg versus one Garrett Brett. So yeah. I thought that was a yeah. I heard that uh, Garrett outmeted him round one. Can can we use those names Garrett now Brett? that we're can we can we use those names now that we officially have a board game for that for that license? What? What? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know what NDA is. Lord only knows. I mean, Nathan has NDAs over matter. everything. No, we're everything's official for this board. Like they had banners up about it at the event. Um, some of the highlights of the weekend. Uh, definitely was watching Garrett Brett play the the jokiest order Vincent Gray deck of not even low in throws, just. It's a great rose. It was amusing to watch him play. You want to hear something more uh, amusing? Him on the stream with that mustache. Yeah, I was. I, 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 when I first saw him on Saturday, I said, "Garrett, what's up? What's up with the porno stash?" And he looked at me. It's like, "Well, I'm cosplaying as my card, my, 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 my cardboard." I was wondering if the mustache was like the signal for end of tax season in Canada or something. Uh, also, the, the best, best highlight, one of the other highlights, was I got to meet Steve. I got to meet Stephen Blue. Blue. That was pretty. Oh cool. yeah, Spike. Yep. He signed the banner. I saw. Yep. He signed the banner. Uh, and for the first time ever, I fanboyed out over something. <laughs> I don't do it very often for like, oh, for many things. But I was just like, you have done the voices of. You, your, your, vo your, your voice is, is identifies with so many of my favorite characters in all of anime, and I said, and thank, thank you for that. <laughs> and he just, like, <laughs> looks at me, he's like, he's just like, I hear that so much, but it's great to hear it again. I thought that was, that was pretty cool. The one time I fanboyed out on something was at Origin, so thankfully no one so, no else saw. Cause there was oh, when you there. got that. When I got to see my, uh, yeah, when I got to get my book signed for my two favorite authors. That I've been reading their books since I was like six. Ah. All right, Chris. So Chris. All right. Let's talk Chris. about your you've been playing Lord Raptor 
seems like since you got into the game. Am I correct? Well, actually, uh, not quite. Started with Dr. Wiley. I was a, a Wiley only player for a long time, but well, actually, yeah, eventually Shane gave me the Raptor. Why don't we actually go? When, how long have you been playing the game? When did you start and what brought you into the game? Uh, well, I started about a, maybe half a year ago last summer. And uh, so maybe, I guess, almost, almost a year ago. ago. Yeah, yeah, almost a year. And uh, I don't know. I just there was a there's a community popping up at AGP, the game store where I play. And my friend Brian just said, hey, uh, this game's cool. It's a you know, I love fighting games. So it seemed like a natural fit. I just wanted to give it a try. I always like card games. So, yeah, I just gave it a shot and it was a fun game. So and now it's and now it's worth your value. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I finally made something back. So that, that's going to. Cool. Gonna use that check to travel to more events. I, uh, you know what? I just might. I, yeah, uh, at least I'm gonna be making it out to Cali for sure. You know, that's not very far. But as far as East Coast stuff goes, ooh, I don't know. That's pretty far. Maybe. I mean, we'll wait, see. Say, wait till they announce nationals, because I've been hearing nationals is gonna be on the East Coast this year, and hopefully we'll see it happen, and you'll know, you make a trip out for that. I would like to make it to nationals. That's a great point. Yeah. Because, you know, the next the next best thing to money is the cardboard. I, I want that cardboard, yes. It still eludes Matt and I and Joe, but... What are you soon. talking about? I got a card named Joe. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I already <laughs> retired. Do uh, what? Here's a question for you, Chris. Uh, what's your favorite card from Indies? And what you got to play with this weekend? Favorite card from Indians. Um, I'm not saying this is the best card, but my favorite card. Favorite, not best. Favorite card is Swordbreaker. Just because it's ridiculous in Runica. It does so much damage. And uh, you discard your top two cards of your opponent's deck. If they're two foundations, you can add the first attack you played to your momentum and then multiple it out. So it's almost like a, a rain flush, but... Yeah, without, without the, the weird requirements. requirements. And oh, you can easily force foundations to the top of their deck, so it's, it's more consistent than you think. Holy has so many ways to do that now. Um, you mean good? It has this card. Good, holy. Anyway. holy. It's, it it's actually was called holy at one time. It, yeah. That was its symbol, and then they changed it to good. So bad, I, that's what it used to be. So we, call, we, we still call it once in a while. Okay. Uh, it has <laughs> this. It has rain flush. It has... Uh, What's, What's the, the uh, Jetta, Jetta attack? attack? I always forget it. Oh, uh, Finale Rosso. Finale Rosso. Rosso, yeah. It has it amazing has a... attacks. Yeah. Here. Like, like it, there, now that it has a, like an amazing three, three check, check on those attacks. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I was, was very unsure about, about this set. And, and, and when I, I, I literally was sitting there at, at the Joffice on Thursday. Or no, Friday. So you're at the job office reading the cards. And I am just like, it took literally, it took me until I was driving home and I had my binder all made up of all the cards already because I brought it with me because I knew I was getting my stuff out there. And just reading through the cards and trying to figure out what these cards can do. It was fun to do overall. It's definitely a really fun set and will definitely shake up the game. That's what it uh, all right, what else we got? To do? Um, tell us about more of top eight. Uh, we sure. uh, well, just tell heard us about, about the game you... general. Yeah, yeah that, that too. too. Just tell us more about like, your, your favorite, favorite stories from the weekend for it for the tournament. Uh, well, uh, it, the summer heat play mat I think definitely got some some people out there because my friend Weichi entered the tournament for five. Didn't even play a, play a single, single round. round. He did it. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's got his mat and he's out. There was a lot of people that were like, and then there were people who showed up on Sunday and they're just like, can I buy the mat? And I'm like, you could have been here yesterday. We were here till, set, you know, set, until the cog closed at seven. And they were like, oh, I couldn't make it. I'm like, okay, well, 10 bucks. And they're like, $10. And I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> like the mat was a big selling point for the event. It seemed Across, across the board, the board and, and I'm sad, sad that a lot of players were turned, turned off from the event for different reasons. reasons. It feels like because I don't know. I, I, I'm not I'm saying that we were expecting a bigger turnout, turnout, but 
I always get said that there's a large, there's a pretty large play group in Vegas, and people were just trying to make it. Some people just couldn't make it happen. But the event was fun overall. I got to meet some great people because I don't know anybody in the Vegas play group. Like I got, I got, I got my, I got my butt handed to me by an Elizabeth Middle. Oh, was that Sarah? Sarah, yeah. yeah Sarah, I, yeah. I played her at round two, and she, she, I literally got my, my ass handed to me. Because somebody who can pick up a new power struggle every turn is pretty good against Dimitri. I could not chip any damage ever. Yes, Sarah has pretty much made Elizabeth her character, and she she has a lot of experience with it. She's very good with it. She has bought me with that deck a few times, so do not underestimate the mill. Yeah. Especially when you're trying to dig for your own deck making checks and you're like, I'm playing a 75 card Dimitri deck. How it might be built out. <laughs> All those oh, checks you make. I know. All right. Um, so, so what was your match of the weekend? It was it the finals or was there another match you would consider the weekend? Uh, you know, that's a tough one. It might have been actually when I played my the first time in Swiss. I think we might have had a little bit better match. You know, a little bit less nerves. We were more in our in our groove. Uh, I think that was the either I think the second round. I played him in the second round. And yeah, we had a it went to time. It was a very close match. I ended up just sneaking and went at the very end. But uh, like he actually like he in the entire finals he never got a Terry's cap where in Swiss he managed to get Terry's cap down. And that was uh, that was helping him pummel me quite a bit better. Oh goodness that card. I have to read that card. Yeah, yeah that's what right, I like, different. I don't remember what it does, and then I look at it. And, oh, that card! I know it like it cantrips on the block. Oh, yes. Yeah. Tap stuff when you clear something. Yep. Yeah. He yeah. pitches from my card pool. He gets to commit two of my foundations, so he can hit my ever hopeful. He can hit whatever he likes. It's pretty scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like for. For having, I, I, I will say what the possible, from what the possible finals could have been, it could have been you versus Garrett Brett, or like when, once your match was done, I'm like, well, it's going to be either him versus Garrett Brett or him versus Miles. And I'm like, those could be really good matches. And then when they said, whoa, Joe, what happened? Oh, I think he put, uh, his, he's trying to put his headset in. And it, yeah, I'm trying to put my headset in so the echo stops. Ah, Joe, Joe, that's a thing. There we go. Well, I'm trying to oh. fix the echo issue. Oh, we're not hearing it. Uh, uh, yeah, apparently the stream is. Uh, we don't hear it. Uh, the viewers are hearing it, though. Oh, what he's, what he's broadcasting is causing an echo. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, but let me say, like, you versus... Miles in the finals was a pretty good match to put it together because it was definitely fun to watch. Like, like Miles, Miles has played Terry since I've met, met him. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the, the first, first event I met, I, I met Miles that I was like, oh, he plays like Terry, and then he just kept playing Terry, and I'm like, okay, this is a thing. <laughs> to see him actually get some really good success with Terry is, you know, it's good to see. Oh, you can tell that he's got a ton of experience with the deck. He's he's very smart with his decisions. He knows exactly what I'm capable of, what he's capable of, and he's always ready, it seems like. Yeah. He always knows what to do. Oh, I know. I I will say, like, I watched the final I'm watching the finals from like literally me and Brett Hillman were huddled around a one of the small monitors they put out. And, and we're, we're like, like literally, literally watching all your plays. plays. Like we're like, like literally like getting next, next to as possible so we can watch, watch see your hands on camera and stuff like that. And we're just like, like see who's gonna do what. And then when we saw your kill turn on in game three, we're just like, it's <laughs> over. We're like, we can't say it. we gotta be quiet. Go we will screw through everything up. But we just is like when he went reversal and kicked your ultimate on dead, we're like, it's over. Unless he has terrible checks, this is over. Uh, you know, honestly, people were picking apart that decision, but it, I don't think it would have mattered. Even if he had left the ultimate undead there, I think. Oh, you had, just, you checked five, five. You yeah. went five five. Like you were. Yeah. You were there. I was coasting. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I just was, Garrett Brett called it the nuts, and I, I don't think he was far off. I pretty much had exactly what I needed to, to mm -hmm. win the game right there. Oh. But yeah, that was a solid tournament to watch. Like it was a good way if. If I were to show high level UFS being played, that video is a good thing to have for us as a as a community. 
Like oh, I, that game I, one. Oh yeah. Game one was nuts with the self destruct and going yeah. back and forth and yeah, it's just nutty game for sure. A lot of fun to play. Like I looked away for a few seconds. It took me a bit to realize that a self destruct had happened. Like I went to go grab a glass of water and I come back downstairs. I'm like, wait, they're on game two. <laughs> yeah, had he not done that, I had everything. I had oh. everything I needed to just just get in there and smash him. But oh man, he self destructed. I think I had two Templars in hand and like three attacks. So yeah. rebuilding was rough after that. Mm -hmm. Made it pretty close. That's truth. Ooh. Um, sorry. I, like I said, I'm a little bit of a, I'm a little zoned out because it's been a long week for me between driving back and forth from Vegas. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that drive was something. I have never, I, I will say this. There, I know that there's a section of the country I technically didn't see because it was the middle of the night. And it's like <laughs> from roughly the Mississippi to the Rocky Mountains was like our night drive section every time. We'd like we'd hit it like just as we're getting dark out, and to like when we drove in, we drove through Denver and we went through the mountains, and it was amazing. And then we drove back, we drove south through like the Mexico and stuff like that. Like we ate dinner in Albuquerque Monday night, Tuesday night. We like literally twenty four hours later, we're in Ohio. We're in Ohio eating Chick Fil A. Wow. Like, we were cruising. Like, the, you just don't, you know, until you look at a map and you like realize, like, we drove two, we drove 4,000 miles there and back, like, total there and back. It was, it's ridiculous what Sean and I did. So, give me some perspective here. How many hours on the road was that? Um, so, roughly it was 30, it was 39 hours both ways. We get three hours going there, though, because of the daylight savings time. But then on the way back, we left. Three hours later, and plus we lost three hours on the you know the time change, so it was it was you really it was thirty eight hours both ways with stops, because we did not stop to sleep. We just kept going. Wow, that is. I played a lot of Omega Red Pokemon. <laughs> All right. Omega Omega Ruby. Wow. Torchic, so you Torchic guy. Uh yeah, fire chicken all the way. Uh, uh. I never played. Actually, haven't played with like a lot of the, but like the megas and stuff like that. So I'm trying to like get like certain guys so I can just do like the mega evolution versions. Like I'm just having fun with the game. Like I get to play. I get to play with my favorite fighting type. Um, I call, I always call Yokozuna, but the sumo, the, like the the two sumos uh, that they evolve from each other. Makuhita uh, and Hariyama. Makuhita. Yeah, Which, I love those guys. They probably will make an appearance or get a Mega Evolution in Sun and Moon because they're also Samoan themed. Yeah, but they're just they're like so, like that was my favorite. Like that was the one that was one of like the last series I played. Like was that that so I played it again with all the newer stuff they added to the game. It was pretty cool. But that was my trip, more or less. <laughs> On top, nothing crazy happened with Sean and I, luckily. Outside of, you know, midnight, like, literally phone calls in the middle of the night with Jason Horonsky. <laughs> Those were fun. <laughs> so, more Indians questions. Mm. Um, Chris, do you think you're going to play something other than Lord Raptor for a while and maybe pick up some Indians character? An Indians character? I I actually I have built Runica all already, but it's a pretty scrubby build. It's just whatever cards I had laying around. But I really like Runica. The the stacking of her asset I think is a cool mechanic. Yeah. And, I have no uh, idea what I want to do with her. I have like I have her sitting on the floor with Forex Battlefest. I'm like, okay, where where do I go from here? I want to play like an air control deck with her. Because you're just like using her ability to control their their foundations and assets. And then you play like Black Justice and Ever Hopeful, and you're just like, get rid of all your junk. <laughs> I want to play with just Indians cards for a couple of weeks and just see how well that works mm. against locals and be like, all right, if someone's brand new gets in the game just by buying a box of these, what'll happen? You know, the, there's not enough spams, in my opinion, no. in Indians. Not enough low difficulty foundations. There's a lot of twos. 
So it's kind of hard to build a deck just on Indian's cards. You could build a really good, like, like you could build a first class uh, turbo deck with it, but yeah. you can't get to a full constructed deck. Right. I think. Like, I, that's that's fine. Like, I can't wait to play some of these characters. Like, some of these characters are like, I really think are very well designed for that format. Like, outside of like the other deck for design for, but the characters are just like, these are characters that were. Like, they just play styles that were missing from Turbo Format. Seems like every they, character has potential, right? Like, there isn't a... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tatsumi's the weakest one, I think. And even then, when we were talking about how underwhelming she seemed, we started to talk out this deck list, and I'm like, you know, maybe, maybe this doesn't... Maybe this isn't that bad. I think so. Tatsumi's the sleeper of the set. Yeah, underestimated. I don't think she's the worst character of the set. I mean, I, it, my it favorite character is Cadenza. That's my favorite character. I like magical robot. I like magical gigantic robots. Like, it overall matters also on how well the meta is going to go. Like, mm. if everyone's still just playing the, all right, I'm going to play six attacks and kill you in one turn deck, then Elagor's not that good. But if people are just playing small poke games and you can like half block and reversal them and then make a your first move big the next turn and swing back at him, he could be good. Yeah. Uh, There's a link. I, I'm hoping this set will change deck ideas. Like, I'm thinking the game's going to finally, it might be able to get to that mid, where we play mid game more. I think just from how, like, some of the some of the new decks are designed. Like, I actually want to play Cadenza just to make people go to the mid game. Because that's the get the level of UFS I love. I don't like beating people in like four on turn three. It's like I like going to let's play it nice and slow. We're gonna work each other back and forth, and then I'm just gonna get on top. I'm just gonna win the game mid in the mid game because I just have you can't build after a certain point against Cadenza. You can't block properly against him. Like I can't wait to just shove Cadenza because I damage down people throw. It's like I'm I'm five hand size, but I'm like. Try to block. <laughs> if you block me with a foundation, uh, you discard a card, and it's just all there. Even Templar is not quite as good. You're you're losing yeah. one of your two cards. Yeah. Uh, I just can't wait to shuffle up with Hikaru. I've got like four different deck builds. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's got all the hype, right? Isn't Hikaru the the big hype character? Yeah, so hyped that they had to nerf him in between when he got spoiled and the set coming out. Yeah. They hey, lost two. Ooh. Sun 2 would have been kind of crazy. I, I I think the Vitality loss was a little unnecessary. Yeah. I think AT was fine. Like I lost multiple games to one life when I've been testing it so far. Uh, so that's that's really burning me. I I want to try Schechter. Uh, I'm just going to shuffle all of our cards together in a starter deck, basically, and just see what happens. Uh, my only concern is... is um, I feel no matter what symbol I play off of her, I want Chasm Busters. And I got rid of my Chasm Busters because I want that oh. set gone. Mm. You know, the character I'm looking forward to is Kadath with his really cool, like, control aspects. Ooh. Yeah, I, I, like, crapped on him a little bit when I first saw him. The more and more I think about him and I've seen the rest of the support, I'm like, okay, he's not that bad. I think he could be quite good. I think yeah. he's got a lot of potential. I guess the amount problem, of staging area hate you can have. I guess my problem is with a control character, I want to be a seven or an eight hander. Like I might just take a lot of his cards and just play them in Jiffany. Oh yeah. <laughs> like that may or may not be another deck that's on the floor behind me. That could be pretty disgusting. Like your void deck got like a pile of stuff <laughs> that you played at that you played at worlds last year like it's just it seems like, like void really got a lot yeah yeah if void i don't got, think Void needed it like i think it got just a different variation more than anything like it, it did get like like the best like the i'd say the best foundation it got was darkness within i think that card is ridiculous is that the one that uh after they play a foundation you just pick up the top card of your disco pile and oh add yeah hand. yeah that one's huge. like that card now, like, if you have a couple of those down you could get multiple cards Ooh, interesting oh, oh yeah it's, it's a very good 
it's really good in also it, I was I think it's gonna be really good to give like certain characters just that, that extra card advantage they need. Uh, I, I don't know. I have, there's a lot of testing that has to ha come out of, of these cards, but, but there's a lot when of they play a foundation as a form, right? It's not if they. No, block. it's when they. Yeah, it's when they yeah. play a foundation. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like Cadenza where if they play a non-attack card. The difference they, of it not saying the phrase "card" after foundation is what prevents it from working. Whenever. Mm -hmm. Oh, it'd be insanely broken. It'd be so broken if they could yeah. block with a foundation. Yep. Just, yeah, oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of things. I'm gonna lay out stuff and just... I, I think a cool with... attack is uh, cut plane, where you discard three momentum, and you make your you look at your opponent's hand, and they lose all of their non-attack cards. I really like that card, except it costs three momentum. See, here's the thing: you play Kadath with his Erlite key asset. And that counts as a momentum. You can use yeah. the early key as momentum. I think that's I think that's pretty cool. But then it might not be the it's best. It's pretty thing. cool. Like I just I feel with where the game is and with other things that are out. Like, can't I just be killing my opponent with that momentum? Fair. I mean, if, if I can if I can have something that straight up kills them after I discard their hand, maybe. Mm. Which I guess everywhere is everywhere. Yeah, you got everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to play everywhere off of death and go like move everywhere, just punch in some shield rams. Like that thing triggers shield ram. Yep. Everywhere is arranged? Yes. Oh my goodness. Why? Oh, it's so good. I mean, the shield ram, the shield ram plan off it's really solid. Like I'm trying to, I have a couple ideas of characters I want to play. It, with all these new cards, and I'm looking back at old characters that I kind of put to the wayside too. Yeah, and I'm trying to figure out which ones can do something as well. Duo, oh, duo cool. is very real at the now, I believe. Mm -hmm. Like duo with slaughterhouses, so good. I yep. was looking at mature with all this uh, Shekther support with all these yeah. attack things. That's what uh, I've been saying. Yeah, like yeah. she's definitely. It's it's the question of. Do you want all your checks, all your attacks to be much easier to play and be a six hander? Or do you want to be a seven hander and have built in damage bump and ways to trigger all of her things that ask for when things are destroyed this turn? Here's what you do though. You're not you're playing mature just to stall for time. You're getting the decks uh, figured out until Tomahawk Man comes out. And then when Tomahawk <laughs> Man comes out, that deck is just okay, beyond nuts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you I have the whole deck. They all, since all three work around the same mechanic, you're refining yeah. it with Schechter and Mature. Then you have that statistical and probability math coming out when Tomahawk Man comes out. You have a sure win deck. I like Chaos the most because you get Golden Ticket. Mm hmm. And all three yep. of them conveniently have chaos. Yup. So I need yep. to find where my golden tickets are. All right. So I do have a question for Chris. I did watch <laughs> the stream. Uh, how exactly did you manage to stack all the hurricane uppers all three games? <laughs> oh, hurricane upper. Uh, you know, that was, that was lucky. I'll give you that. But uh, I don't think I got one in game three, did I? I thought you did. Uh, I don't think so. Well, no, if you did, it was probably three. still in hand because you just went nuts on game three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, actually game two, I was kind of salty that I had to make that play with the two hurricane uppers and then the shield ram. I would have rather just had some foundations to build, but uh, he destroyed my entire staging area shortly before that. But oh uh, yeah, game one, uh, nobody, I guess game one, I was also just a bit lucky, but I also checked a three on ultimate and dead and then a two on the first hurricane upper. So I would say that my luck uh, about broke even. All right. Do we have Almost any lost. other questions for Chris? Oh. Uh, we started talking about endings and my brain started clicking. Like <laughs> I've just been like laser focused on the Hikaru deck, which turned into four different builds of Hikaru. See, I'm uh, looking at Runica up an order weapons build. 
Oh, yeah. You could put uh, like, Kyan, Hanya, and Battle Fist in one deck. Say go. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Um, I, I think, think the strongest part about Runica is she, she puts, puts her, her Battle Fist somewhere, somewhere where your, where your opponent, opponent can't destroy them. them. Yeah. I have a question. Is the attach zone in the staging area? No, no. it is not. The, attach, the attachment zone is a is a public zone that gets created around the card that it gets attached to. Okay. I was just trying to figure out if, like, her and Tamayose were just insane. Nope. Okay. See, I was just kind of wondering... Just on her battle fist either. No spinning necros. Get those out of here. That doesn't work. Okay. See, I was kind of so wondering about good. that because I was wondering if they were going to go with that attachment zone mechanic with uh, Napalm Man because he has to attach things to I... yeah. the uh, opposing player's foundations to blow them up. Mm. Well, uh, one second, guys. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Uh, cats. One second. Cats let. Ah, uh, yes. Our two unseen mascots, the UFS cats. Yep. My, my cat's just biting at my foot. That's all. So, J702 wants to know Chris, what was the scariest deck in the weekend during the weekend? That was not tops. The scariest. That was not tops. Ooh, wow, that's a great question. Um, I was I was undefeated. I, I hate to brag, but I so I did. <laughs> you I didn't see the a lot tournament, right? Yeah, I I did. I never lost a, a match, so I didn't see a lot of the decks that were playing at the lower tables. But um, I guess I'm just gonna have to to skate around this question by saying I thought the most interesting deck was the Gabrick that made tops. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, what, what was, was with that, that Gabrick deck? Because okay. that, he's like so, out of left field completely. So, to my understanding, it's it's Keel is his name. If I'm, I can't remember that. I don't uh, have a, it's spelled K-E-L-E is how you spell it. I could tell yeah. you that. Uh, so, uh, Kel? Yeah. I think it's Kel. Kel. Yeah. Um, he is definitely new to the game. Uh, he... Shane got him into the game in like the last few months. He's his cards were pretty much promos. Uh, a Gabrick pre a Gabrick a Gabrick set, and then a few and then commons and uncommons that he was able to get a hold of. That was his deck. He was literally playing the Gabrick theme deck. So like, he was going uh, rolling ankle grab into Death Valley face plan. Yes. yes. Okay, I'm like, not arguing that. We had 13th story <laughs> oblivion smashing people. It was it was fun to watch. I, I'm not going like, to argue he, that. He caught a lot of people off guard by just how, like, like nobody plays really against Gabrick. Which is just be straight about it. Nobody really plays yeah. against Gabrick. So when a Gabrick is out across from you, it you changes you your gameplay, and you don't realize it so because of like his ability. Here is the most important it, question I have about that Gabbard deck. Did he go and have Steve Blum sign the Gabbard card? Because, and this is me personally, because of uh, a couple of his foundations where he's sitting there smoking a cigarette, I literally said, there's like, this is like looking at Spike Spiegel with long hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't believe so. And he, he was a very nice guy. Like um, on Sunday after he lost in the top eight, uh, he ca came over to the booth and I'm there like help doing my thing with Sean and he just had this his iPad and he's like here's my UFS ultra list of everything I want pull out what you can <laughs> like we pull out like wow. literal, like a giant pile of dog soccer and like all these commons and uncommons from so we should expect to see more of Kel that's what I'm hearing yeah he, he, bought, he put some money in and then he picked up a few other things he really wants to play Dimitri um I think I, I, I he's gonna get there. It's gonna take. Oh, he's walking the path down the dark side. He's going to the dark side. That's so not good. We got to bring the him other back. interesting thing <laughs> we saw this weekend is that uh, aside from your deck, we didn't see the usual suspects. We didn't see a Felicia. There was a Felicia in the tournament, and he was in the tournament to get the play mat. That's I could best way I could describe that player. Was it not <laughs> but, uh, Danielle's Felicia? Danielle was not at the event. Oh. No Danielle. Uh, there was no Felicia. Uh, there was, well, there was a Felicia registered, but um, there was... There was two Athenas, I think. Two Athenas. There was... One time. Yeah, there was two Athenas. Uh, Brian 
Harrison from the Dallas play group. He's like the only one who travels from that group. And and Kevin Broberg were playing Athena. Uh, there was two Dimitris, the myself and Brett Hillman. Uh, like it's basically Felicia that we didn't see. Like, like the Felicia was the big one. There was no and and Air Deck made it. So yeah, the one that I wanted to have win. So thanks, Chris. Oh, you anytime, anytime. Now I have to ask one question because this has actually come to came to pass when you played the deck at Worlds this past year. Uh, when did you start playing Raptor? Roughly was it like in like November? Of you know, yeah, it was it was just like maybe about a month or two before Worlds, exactly. Just to okay. give me some time to, to practice it up. All right. As we're, we're trying to figure out if we're, we're trying to pr- figure out if Andrew Force was the our, from the Rochester group who played that deck at the PTC at Poughkeepsie first and then played at the two came in second the two K with the deck. It's like if he's the, I'm trying to figure out who's the innovator of the deck. Who 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 got off the ground with it first? That's what we're trying to figure out. Uh, you know, Shane gave me the deck, and I think he said it was inspired by somebody that topped yeah. the PTC. Yeah. So that that was probably yeah. him. Yeah. Okay. So that's we have that we got that to work with as a because Andrew's like, man, that deck seems a lot like mine, and I'm like, well, I it might be. You know, Andrew, people when well, you make a deck and people evolve on it, it happens. And like, and then also it's like. Design eventually when you're just coming up with and designing decks and playtesting, eventually all design leads to around the same thing. So if enough people are playtesting the game, a similar deck should show up. Mm-hmm. There's also uh, Sonic was playing that deck first. He just refused to put Hell Dunks in. Yeah, oh, I kept it's on so telling. Good. I kept it's on so telling. Put in Hell Dunk. He's like, nah. And then Andrew's just like, I'll build this deck and I'll put in Hell Dunk. Yep. You're happened? plussing off of it. You're getting an extra review so you could maybe build a Soul Beats with it. Ooh. Oh, it's so good. I don't know how you wouldn't It's like it. my favorite Raptor card. Yeah. I think Soul it's Beats. the best, best attack. Soul Beats is like his spicy card that, like, I like it in, I like it in a lot of decks and I like, I'll, it'll always be on the, like, I'll build my list and I'll be like, I'm looking at my spams and I'm like, well, I could play like two Soul Beats and like I could do some, like I could do like uh play it early, pick it up with uh play it on death, and like pick it up with a powerful assassin, and then just if I don't block, I review. Like you just you could use that card yeah. different ways. And you're like, oh, it's gonna get back in play either way. You just find a lot of uses. It is. I used to play the uh, the Southern Cross Hall Raptor's asset, so I could block with it and then pick it up and then make his next attack a mid, then block with a Templar, and then review the Soul Beats later. Like just the ultimate oh. greed. <laughs> oh, the Southern Cross Hall. That's a that is a card in his support that I really like. And when it's when people play it proper, use it properly, it's great. And then when they don't know, realize what they're doing with it, they just fall apart because of it. Because I've played against some Raptor people play Raptor and they'll play it, and I'm like, okay, uh, they'll play it and they'll activate it with like I have anti-draw, anti, you know, like I have caught right-handed out. And I'm like, I'm not sure if they are trying to lure my caught right-handed or if they're just not sure that it stops it <laughs> sometimes. But, like, I've caught people, like, they go block and they start activating and they go pick up the card. I'm like, no, 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 put that back. <laughs> caught right-handed you. <laughs> After I played Garrett's Jiffany, uh, he would play, like, he would be, have eight cards in his hand. He would play a Summer Heat and draw a card and then pass his turn. Uh, and then he would draw a card at the start of his turn with Southern Cross Hall. And uh, then I decided that card should not be in my deck anymore. Yeah. When you're, when, <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. When you realize you're giving them an extra card to see, it's like, mm. yeah. Air Tiki is just too good, and they're both terrains. So the Air Tiki ended up taking it. You, you Vegas players have quite the, the want for that card. Like, that's like, not me. Plus like, two, plus one instead of plus one, plus one. Oh. Oh, it's like too much. When Air, Air Tiki. Like, oh, a lot of people bought into that card. Like, like when the set we, came we out. Came to Vegas, Sean came to Vegas with, I think, like 20 of them. They were all gone by Sunday. Yeah. And I was like, like a guy, one of the guys came up Sunday morning, and he was just like, how many Air Tiki's you got left? And I'm like, 15. And he's like, I'll take them all. And I'm like, wow. 
okay. I, 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 like, I know the card. The card's good, but I don't think it's. I need to buy out a store on it. Good. <laughs> yeah, when that set first came out, excuse me. Um, Poughkeepsie bought like sixteen copies of that card between their play group. Mm. They were also but Gemini man with that card. Yeah, that was kind of stupid. Well, I got a gr uh, question, Chris. Do you play any other card games other than UFS? I, I started with Magic the Gathering. I'm not okay. going to lie. I played a bit of Magic. I haven't played much recently since I started playing UFS, but I still like it. Everybody that hates on Magic, they can uh, they can take it up with me. I don't care. I, okay. Well, I'll take it up with you after the I show. I don't hate Magic. <laughs> I just I only played Legacy, which really translated to I only played four times a year. And for how much my cards were worth... It just wasn't worth to hold on to them. Mm -hmm. And every time I, I got into Magic, I wound up in a very bad play group where it was very demeaning if you didn't know anything. Hmm. Yeah, I I play Magic. I use Magic as a market to make money. <laughs> like, I was really sad that I didn't get to get to any stores in Vegas. And because there's a card that I've been up that we've been that my friends that I talk with on the, fi the magic financial community have been really spectating on. And if I had bought, I guarantee I could have gotten them in Vegas for like a dollar because they are now currently $10 mm. and over the period of four days. And guess what it is? Steam, Steam Fogger, like the, the stupid card from a future site. Steam Fogger boss. Why? Because it's going to be in the next set. Finally. So people are going crazy on it. Is that that Kaladesh said? Yeah, Kalad they they made a reference in the the tagline for the set about things being put together. So I am actually assume. considering rejoining Magic uh, at uh, <laughs> to, to build to build contraptions uh, at Game <laughs> Cave uh, where I play. Uh, I will give Magic one more try. Oh my god. I feel the next will be that's a bit how crazy point. speculation in magic is now. Yep. Where you could put a possibility of something in a in a quotation for the set and people go crazy for a card. Yeah, I don't know if it be in there. It might not be in there, but I bought 30 of them for a dot for 50 cents and I've already sold them for I already sold them for a dollar fifty. I'm not even to try to keep them any longer. I don't want to play the market. I just want to get my my dollar fifty value. So I remember uh, a few months back when people were asking me if I had any Inquisition Kozilek sitting around and remains in my collection. Yeah, because it wasn't in Modern Masters. They went back uh, to doing stuff with the Eldrazi, and like right as the set dropped, everyone assumed it was going to be in the set. And then they look at the full set release. It's not there. Card shoots up to like sixty dollars the next day. Yep. So let me look at something real quick, because me, Matt, and Jesse all play the new versus system game. Have you gotten a chance to try that, Chris? No, not not at all. I've been hearing some fun. Vegas people and other groups playing it. Um, yeah, Indy is out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, versus system, I want to talk about this a little bit because, you know, we want to try and hit this game a bit more often. Uh, Mad, don't let me forget to remind you, they finally put a site out that has a competent deck builder system. Oh, I saw. Okay. I saw it already. Yeah. Um, August, um, they will be adding the Alien Battles uh, for Versus. This will encompass all four games, or all four movies, excuse me. Um... My, and since it's a normal size box like uh, A-Team and Defenders, we're looking at, is it four characters or five characters, usually? Four characters. Four yeah, characters. Four. Um, there are no confirmations yet, but my guess for the four characters on the evil side, so it would be, would be the creature which from Aliens, from Alien, just the... Xenomorph. They'll probably just call it, like, the creature or the walker. Uh, aliens will probably be the queen, because she is the most iconic alien out of that one. Uh, three will probably be the runner, or the dog Xenomorph. Yep. And yep. then four is obviously going to be the hybrid. 
Um, you could also, uh, and this is, of course, pure speculation, if you don't want to have the creature for Alien, you could also have the rogue android Ash, because he was yeah. a villain in that movie series. Mm -hmm. uh, the 40, there, there's, there's also, also been word that the alien, it might be the alien universe, possibly, and it means they could be putting the Predators. The predators uh, I'm actually well. getting to that. <laughs> yeah. Um, good guys. Um, again, all of this is pure speculation. I, 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 I want, want Danny Glover's, Glover's character from Predator, Predator 2. 2. That's what I want. I think he's going to be in the Predator set because they said Versus will be adding Firefly, Predator, and already they're going to expand Alien. Yeah. But I, think, like, um, I, I would think it would be easier for design wise. Maybe they just put it all in one, the whole Alien and Predator universe, all is one thing. And that's, you know, that's all they do. Like, well, I mean, I, I mean, realistically, you can have four different Predators and four different hero characters from the uh, yeah. Alien or Predator, Predator 2, Predators. And if the game comes out late enough, it may be in time for that new Predator movie they've been talking about. Oh, God, I forgot about that. That's, that's how it's um, wasted. Good guys for Alien. Uh, again, this is all speculation. Uh, Alien will probably be uh, Dallas. Because let's face it, guys, we can't have Ripley four times over. Um, well, there, she's, anyway, she's four different characters in every movie. She's a different character in every movie. No, she's like, the only character she wasn't Ripley. Ripley was Alien Resurrection. She was that's a constant. true. She was a clone. Yes. So we have we could have Dallas. Uh, set two, we will probably have or for Aliens, I would probably guess Hicks. Uh, for Alien yeah. Three, I that would be where I would guess would be Ripley. I mean, you know, like I said, she's iconic in all three of her roles. Alien 4 was just kind of shaky. And then Alien Resurrection, I would think it would either be either Winona Judd, was it Winona Ryder? Winona Ryder's character Call, or, or Ron Perlman's character. Ron Perlman, yeah. Because he had the cool gun. <laughs> he had the cool gun, but uh, Call actually continues in the Alien comic series as the main character. Oh, that's kind of cool. Well, um, we'll see what happens. I mean, they're going to start figuring, they're going to start probably spoiling stuff in, Ju in June. Then probably we got, after Origin, so. Then we have Firefly, Predator, and again, more Alien. All I care about that's not Marvel related is Firefly. Yeah. I I've know. been <laughs> holding off on buying all the Firefly games that have come out. Just because I'm like, I know this is going to come out in something I already play, so let's just wait. See, these mm -hmm. two are going to hate me because I own Firefly, but I've never finished it because it bores me. <laughs> Get out of the call. <laughs> <laughs> now, and I will explain why. It's kick not him from the, the call, Matt. Kick him from the call. <laughs> Thinking about it. Yes, kick the host from the call. Now, and I'll the explain the, the show, Firefly. Not host of the call. <laughs> uh, I just don't like westerns. And the Western aspect just kind of bores me. I love everything else about the show, but when it hits those hard Western episodes, I have to force myself don't, all the way through it. Don't, don't you like Cowboy Bebop? Bebop? That's not a Western. That's space noir. It's considered a space opera Western. No, it, I, I would say it's space noir. Like, it's space, space noir. Western, you would be Trigun. Sp yeah, Trigun, mm, and Trigun had loose enough sci-fi elements to keep me through, but... Firefly just goes hard, hard Wild West sometimes for me. That's that's what I had to do. Like it was that was a part of the whole thing. Like I really like I've always read like I I I'm one of those crazy people. Oh my god! I'm sorry, guys. I just kind of my my I my my stupid thing popped up. Another member of the Beastie Boys died. Damn it! Isn't that all three now? No, there's one left. I'll tell you one thing that I did enjoy when Firefly was uh, Firefly. Damn, John Barry died. Oh. When but, Firefly yeah, was actually on, this. The, the Firefly thing. I will say one thing about Firefly <laughs> is it, it, because it didn't get another season, a lot of things could didn't happen. But Well, you know what? I, Nathan I, Fillion. I heard the room, there's a rumor right now for Nathan Fillion's next big role and I will wait until it is announced before I 
before it's before I accept it. Well, you I heard that Nathan Fillion's largest I read about this about Firefly yeah, was I don't season think eight. It's gonna happen at all, but that's I don't believe it either, Matt. So yeah, but it's been it popped up everywhere after yeah. they announced it. All right, we're coming to a close. What do we got next tournament wise? Uh, um, our uh, no, 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 no. There's there's something before. There's our, uh, Winnipeg. Yeah, there's Winnipeg, Winnipeg next week or this weekend. This weekend's Winnipeg. And then uh, everyone's at Amusing Games. Yep. Uh, and then the week after that is when everyone's set comes out. Don't don't hold that in front of me. I'll start talking about it. Uh, and then, yeah, there's a set release for Indies. Everyone go get all your cards if you don't have them already. And then the week after that, June 4th through 5th, is the Rochester CCG. Uh, Ro not Rochester. Just Rochester's uh, PTC. PTC. Yep. I'm so used to saying 2K after Rochester. No, it's it's not anymore. This is not a 2K. Yeah. And then July 9th and 10th will be the Atlanta, Atlanta PTC. There's, a, there's one in the end of June in Cali, I think in Reddings as well. Yep, Reddings coming up. Yep, Reddings coming up on the West Coast. Then the, the Dirty South uh, PTC, which is I'm actually planning to travel for that one. Uh, I'm waiting to confirm a room, a place to stay for the event, uh, but I'm planning to go. I want to... If I win our PTC, I'll go. Yeah. I am probably just going to make a day trip. I'll come down, chill out with the guys. If they want to want someone to do commentary for top tables, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, I'm in no position to play right now because I'm horribly out of practice and there's no one to play with. Mm-hmm. So I haven't played in two months, and I'm playing. I haven't up played since somehow. December, Matt. All right, so we got that. That's our come ups. Uh, there obviously is other match, other events coming up beyond it. Uh, we don't have a date for Worlds yet. Uh, or not Worlds, uh, Nationals. Uh, hopefully, be patient, guys. I. I will say this after going after being the in the jaw fest and being around Jasco for the weekend, they are doing a lot to get everything going. And there has been they've done they're doing a lot on the internal side to make things more stable. Um I expect you don't be surprised if we start getting actual release dates for the next sets soon. Like things I the biggest thing I will say is um Actually, well, he did say it a lot. I, I, to my understanding, we have a new printer, but I haven't heard much more than that. Uh, but I don't know. Like, I heard a lot of things around me and even at the convention that's upcoming. So be patient, be ready. Uh, I think for we might finally be over the hump. I, 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 I for the first time, I'm going to say that in a long time. We are over the. We might be over the hump, and things might start flying out the door from Jasco soon. I'll see it when I believe it. I'll believe it when I see I, it. I agree. I completely <laughs> agree. But right. I, I, I feel we're closer to it than we were obviously before. All right. Uh, what else do we got? Gaming-wise, Transformer Tuesday will still carry on. Uh, we kicked the crap out of some Constructicons. We got all of Grimlock's stuff. Hard mode has been a lot of fun. Uh... I got the dodging achievement because of how much dodging I had to do uh, against the Insecticons. Bombshell is a prick. Um, <laughs> Overwatch Wednesdays will start up this Wednesday. I will be streaming Overwatch for about two hours, give mm -hmm. or take. Depends on how salty I get because I am mediocre at that game at best. I'm still figuring out who I like. If I have to rely uh, on Jesse's strategy of just go to Junkrat and lob, and lob uh, explosives, I will. That mm -hmm. strategy works very well. Yep. Uh, uh, I, I actually, I saw the post today. We might get some type of, there's a possibility, there's been a rumor that we, there's going to be one more character released before, before when the game goes live. There was going to be another character released. And yeah, tomorrow, I saw something on Twitter. There's something being announced tomorrow worldwide at a specific time. 
and it will the game will for the, the game that's and i thought everybody's like oh it's just you know install info and stuff like that and it's like it's something big but and it might be a final care a new character it might just be there might be any new character at launch or it could just be it might be three characters. yeah because it's three different times it could I mean, just be there fear was, bastion yeah. There's a because there's a character that's been referenced in lore called Athena, mm -hmm. and so we don't. That, there's been a character that's been one of the characters that's been referenced in the um, the obviously in the Overwatch unit. That's like a like a member that was there at the beginning but was not there when they broke up. Yeah. And then there's obviously you know there's you know I, I if anybody saw the cinematic for Hanzo and Genji, yes, yeah, was, that was great. That was good storytelling. That was. I really, really like that. Um, gosh, what was the other thing I was going to say? Um, we will also be, once I finish Transformers, we'll be moving on to Uncharted. Unless by some means I get Doom. In that case, Doom. Lots of blood. Lots of shooting. I will be dying a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are running out of time. Chris, thank you so much uh, for coming. Yes. Hey, Chris. thanks guys for having me on. Thank you. Okay, much. I thought he disconnected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm still no. here. Still here. I don't know. Thanks for thanks for coming on, Chris. Congrats on the win. Uh getting your, your check for a thousand dollars from from Rochester CCG doc.